Kenny Omega versus Jungle Boy for the AEW World Title. So before the match even begins, all the seconds get ejected. Jurassic Express and the Good Brothers and Don Callis and whoever else is out there. Jungle Boy is just ridiculously over with this crowd. He's doing some very basic lucha style, like run up the ropes and do an arm drag stuff. And the place is just going ape shit. And there's a spot in the second half after the commercial break where he does like a tope and then an elbow suicida. And he goes for a third dive, but Omega cuts him off. But Jungle Boy just cuts off his cutoff, throws him outside, and does the biggest dive of all. It was just a, a, a brilliant build and structure and execution to tease the dive and then deliver it. But you have it be even bigger anyway. That, that was great. There's a wacky cradle superplex by Kenny Omega. And Jim Ross notes that about Jungle Boy, that is not a huge man whose excess can absorb the blow or something along those lines. Which is the opposite of how it works. <laughs> Falling hurts more when you are big. So there's this just white hot sprint of strikes and high spots and Jungle Boy gets the snare trap. The good brothers run in to make the save, but Jurassic Express and Frankie Kazarian appear out of nowhere to fight them off. And in the melee, or in the, in, the, the, in the confusion, it gets kind of overlooked, but Omega actually got the ropes. I think he's the first person to escape the snare trap. He just escaped it on his own. He's just clean, clean, clean escape. So Jungle Boy is constantly avoiding the one-winged angel. Gets the snare trap again. This time, Kenny has to pull the hair to escape. And fans are outraged. You can hear one of them scream, Are you kidding me? And Omega gets the advantage. Hits the V-trigger into the corner. And the double underhook pile driver, the Tiger Driver 98, and Jungle Boy kicks out of that, but that was all he had left. He's done. And Omega grabs him. Finally hits the one winged angel we had tried so many times before. Finally hit it. And of course, that move means doom. So he hits it and pins him and wins. Clean pin. Clean as a sheet pin. Kenny Omega was the better man. He still tried to cheat because he's a dick, but he didn't need to. He had won. Very, very good match. Four stars of the show would have been a worthy pay per view main event. And uh, that was great. Dude, this match was fantastic. I mean, Kenny Omega is so fantastic. And you see him in matches in New Japan, Okada's, etc. And it's like, fuck, look at this guy. But you really see what a great worker he is also in matches like this with Jungle Boy. And the psychology in this match... Both repeatedly going for their moves. The very first thing that happens in this match is Kenny Omega pushes him into the corner and he starts playing with Jungle Boy's hair. Yes, very and condescending. He's, he, well, yes, but then, of course, at the end, the only way that he was able to escape the snare trap the second time was to pull that pretty hair That's also true. that he yes. was making fun of at the beginning of the match. They, they counter the one-winged angel over and over again. He gave Jungle Boy 75% of this match. He's beaten him clean at the end. They did the same thing that they did in the opening match where they eject everybody at the beginning of the match, but then everybody starts coming back at the end. And so you think, ah, oh, fuck, they're going to do this shit that I hate. But instead, the babyface come out and they brawl to the back with those guys. So in fact, we didn't get interference, even though it was teased. It is a clean win at the end. Kenny Omega is the champion. He is the better man. He is better than Jungle Boy, but he is this much better than Jungle Boy. Mm. So Jungle Boy, when he first started, and when he started doing matches, and you know he would he would face somebody, and it would be a big match, but he would lose. And he would face somebody, and he would be a big match, and he would lose. And then he won the Casino Battle Royal, and then he got this championship match here. And this time he lost. He did lose. But he took this guy to the limit in a fair fight. And when it's over, as a fan, I'm sitting there thinking, he's not going to be the world champion soon. But you know what? I'll bet this dude could beat Miro. And as a person who watches the show, I think that he should beat Miro for the TNT title three or four months down the road. That should be his first big title win and AEW building off this match right here. So I thought both guys were great. I mean, this was such a great match. It was an awesome, awesome match. But you, you watch it. You watch the show. You watch AEW. You realize people really, really, really love Jungle Boy. But it's not his time yet. He should not be the top guy right now. He's no, almost... and that's the thing. That's the thing with a guy like Jungle Boy in a promotion like AEW. 
Sometimes you hear criticism that Jungle Boy does takes all of these losses. And, oh, he's, he's losing too much. And the thing is, if you are watching a wrestling promotion and you are invested in the promotion and you're invested in the characters and they do the sports style thing enough for you, it's not whether he wins or loses. I mean, it is. But when he loses, it's like, did he do better? Is he getting yes. better? Yes. Is he getting closer? Mm -hmm. If you as a fan feel that he is getting better every time he gets out there, he's getting closer every time he gets out yes. there, yes. then it's not a big deal if he gets even closer, but he loses. He gets even closer, but he loses because you know that the day will come yes. when he will win. You still have the faith in Jungle Boy, even if he is not beating Kenny Omega on a Saturday night show in front of a thousand people for the eight. AEW world title at the wrong time. Yes. And even Don Callis, heel announcer and Kenny Omega's, I guess, best friend. I'm not sure what their relationship is right now. But, but the, even he is on commentary after the match saying, he didn't win tonight, but this is another step on Jungle Boy's journey. And they're, they're, they're trying to tell a King's Road story here we, where he builds and builds and builds. And the other thing that Callis he, he did He was... back and gets back up. Yes. And the other thing that Callis said that was, I don't even know if he meant to do this or not. But when, when Jungle Boy hit the reverse Hurricane Rana, he then goes for another move, and then he goes for a cover. So when he, goes for the, when he hits the reverse Rana, and he goes to pick up Kenny Omega, Don Callis, who is Kenny Omega's manager, starts screaming at Jungle Boy to make the cover instead. Yes. He, like, marked out watching the match for the other guy. Which was, I mean, it was great. I mean, I loved it, but it was Don just... Don is a tremendous announcer. He's, I, I, he is I call, awesome. I'm like, calling it, like, well, I, in many ways, but in calling a wrestling match like a sport, he's great at it. Yes. Yes. So, afterwards, Kenny Omega goes to attack Jungle Boy with a belt. Christian makes the save, which again, it was established earlier in the show that Christian and Jungle Boy are friends. So, he's out there fighting Omega, but then Christian has lots of enemies. The Hardy family office runs out, and... They've been doing this deal every week where he fights off, like, Private Party and The Butcher, and then Matt Hardy hits a twist of fate. So here he fights off Private Party, but Matt grabs him and goes for a twist of fate, but Christian escapes, and he's going for the kill switch. He's finally going to get this fucker, but then the young bucks are there to double to super kick him in the face and lay him out. And Hardy does a twist of fate to Christian, and all the bad guys are standing over him, and Nick is sitting there doing the, doing the Jeff Hardy dance. <laughs> He's such a tool. And uh, that was that. That was Dynamite. It was awesome. Dude, it, it, was, it was so great because we've been watching this for weeks now. And on every show, Matt Hardy lays out Christian with the twist of fate. Every time. This time, like you said, he goes for it. It almost... He, Christian is in the middle of countering it, but he gets screwed. And then Matt Hardy lays him out again. And it's so obvious where we are going here, which is, of course, they're going to do a match, and Christian is going to hit the kill switch, and he is going to pin Matt Hardy, which will lead to him getting a shot at Kenny Omega for the title. Dude, I love this show. It was awesome. Like, I love this show, the booking of the show, the seeds planted on this show, the seeds they planted in the past that I, as a viewer, invested in, and they were paid off. This is all I want in wrestling. And... It's like when I review Raw and SmackDown and I get so irritated and these people talk about how I'm on the payroll, brother, anybody can do this, okay? I'm not trying to downplay Tony Khan, but this shit, like, the storyline I just told about Christian, that ain't fucking rocket scientists. It's not rocket science. It's a very simple you tease something, you tease something, you almost deliver, you take it away, and then you eventually deliver. Any, anybody can book simple stuff like this. It's all I want to see in my wrestling. If you can't do that, if you can't even do sequential booking from one week to the next, no, I'm not going to like your show. I'll like it when you do it on your show, but when you do it 5% of the time, then you can expect to be praised 5% of the time. Yes. And when AEW plants a seed and does not deliver, I will in fact ask, why the fuck do they not deliver this obvious seed that they planted? When they do it, when they deliver the seed 95% of the time, then I will only bitch 5% of the time. This also is not rocket science. The show was great.
The Zoom meeting is three hours. The Zoom meeting would have only been two hours, except there's about an hour of people going, your mic's not on, Frank. There's like hours of this. Frank, your mic's not on. There was a day where if you would have said, Brian, you and John Moxley have a lot in common. I would have said, no, we have nothing in common. We don't have one thing in common. Well, here it is in 2021, and he's about to have a beautiful baby daughter on my birthday, in fact. Mm. He is also an author. We're both grapplers. And he hates Zoom. I mean, I have more in common with him than most people. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.